today is the 15th of November 2023 and would like to um, continue our lesson using Pythagoras theorem. This will be our third um, lesson. Okay. Um, thank you very much to everyone who has been watching our videos. Um, if you haven't already, um, please subscribe, share, like, and follow. I would really, really appreciate that. And if the account is not yours, please um, ask for permission or ask for someone's help to open your own account. Okay. I normally write, please follow my notes slash scripts. Okay. Pythagoras theorem is a good place to follow my notes. Okay. Um, otherwise, if I say I like for this, so this is 17 all squared. This is 961. If I say um, 916, please follow the scripts, okay? And please beware of scammers, okay? Please beware of scammers, okay? If I have something to say to you, it will be in the videos that I'm showing. If I haven't said it, then it's not me. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Recap. We use Pythagoras theorem to find sides um, A and B. Okay. I showed you earlier how to find the hypotenuse using Pythagoras theorem. That is the C. So yesterday, we just concentrated on using A and B. Okay. Um, please watch the last video for recap. I have an example here for you. This is my diagram. Okay. There is always a right angle, triangle involved when you are using the um, Pythagoras theorem, okay, that side opposite to the right angle, okay, um, this is a right angle, which is 90 degrees, is the hypotenuse, okay, that is the C. And then you have your A, and then you have your B, okay. So we've been using this uh, analogy, use Pythagoras theorem, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So today we have the C part, we have the B, and we are supposed to find A in the recap, the example here. So C squared, we, and our unit is in meters. So C squared, which is 31 squared, will be equal to A squared plus B squared, which is 17 all squared. Okay. I said to you that if I want to add the units, it will become a bit bulky or clumsy. So I wanted to finish, but in the end, Remember to choose the positive side and then add your units, okay? So here, to find A, when A comes to this side, or you leave A here, you have 31 all squared minus 17 all squared. If you use the calculator right, a squared will be equal to 961 
minus 289. A squared now will be 672. So A will be plus or minus 672, the square root. Okay. Now A will be equal to 25.9. The unit here is meters. We are going to choose um, the positive one because we want the length. That is to one decimal place. Or 26 meters to the nearest whole number. If they have not said anything, both are right. But they can ask you to leave it in one decimal place or the nearest whole number. So the, you should do what they are asking you to do. Now, the second part, which is our starter. The second part, which is our starter. I've brought find B. Okay. So this is the longest part, and that is the A, but we don't know B, okay? So find B here now. We use Pythagoras theorem. C is 7.2 all squared. A is 2 kilometers all squared plus B squared. Now, B squared will be equal to 7.2 all squared. If we move this 2 squared to this side, it becomes minus, okay, which is 2 squared, okay. Now, B squared will be 51.84 minus 4. Again, B squared, if you use the calculator right, will be 47.84. So B will be plus or minus the square root of 47.84. Now B, which we are going to choose the positive, okay, will be 6.9. They've given us units in kilometers. So it's 6.9 kilometers to one decimal place or seven kilometers to the nearest whole number. Today, we are going to do more Pythagoras theorem using triangles, specifically the isosceles triangle okay we've done triangles so we know equilateral isosceles okay we know those please we have the videos go and watch them even though pythagoras theorem is fairly easy sometimes it is a bit tricky and not straightforward okay that is how mass is at times they just twist the question a bit but it's the same principles okay so example consider an isosceles triangle with size 18 centimeters and height um, 11 centimeters find the base length okay so i've drawn it out for you an isosceles triangle have two sides equal if you draw from the tip to the base it should meet at 90 degrees okay now in the question we are told this side is 18 centimeters and the height is 11 centimeters okay they are asking us to find the base length 
of this isosceles. So we are going to take guess half of the isosceles triangle, apply Pythagoras theorem, find A, and then double A to find the base length. Basically, that's what we are going to do. Okay. Someone will look at this and say, uh, I can't do it because they know about area of a triangle, but they don't see how to apply Pythagoras theorem. But I'm showing you now how to do it, okay? So now, I'm going to ignore one side. I know the height, which is my B. I know A. I don't know A. I know this log side, which is my C. So straight away, 18, the unit is in centimeters. So 18 all squared there will be equal to a squared plus 11 all squared. So this is what I have here. Now to find a squared there, we have 18 all squared. Now this is positive, so if we move it to that side, it will become 11 all squared. Now, A squared, if you use your calculator right, it will be 3 to 4 minus 1 to 1. So, now, we have if you do that one right, okay, A squared becomes 203. A then is plus or minus the square root of 203. A will become 14.25 centimeters. This is to two decimal place. We choose the positive side. The question, is in uh, centimeters here. Okay. So our answer definitely should be in centimeters. So we found A. Now, to find the base length of this whole uh, base length, okay, is twice a because we've just found from here to there so we need to double our answer to find from here to there so if we double our answer now it will be twice what we found okay so two times of that will give us 28 Point five centimeters. Okay, I intentionally left my answer here to two decimal place because I knew that twenty five at twenty five will give me fifty. So I'll have an opportunity to leave it in one decimal place. So the base length of the triangle will be twenty eight point five centimeters to one decimal place okay if you are finding the base length of an equation like this of a question like this don't just find a and leave leave the answer okay this is where at times drawing is uh, useful okay so now you found a you need to double it don't forget that Now, our next question again. Calculate the base length of the isosceles triangle. As I said to you, isosceles triangle have two equal sides. 
okay and it, in the center it meets the base at 90 degrees okay go back and watch our videos on triangles okay you can recap on that it will help you a lot okay so here again we need to find the base length okay we need to find the base length we need to find that so if we find a we need to double our answer so again using pythagoras theorem see here is 8.7 meters okay which will be equal to a which is a height 3.1 meters plus a squared okay and b squared and a squared so here 8.7 all squared will be equal to a squared plus 3.1 all squared a squared now equals 8.7 all squared minus 3.1 all squared because we are going to move this positive to that side okay now a squared if we use the calculator right becomes 75.69 minus 9.61 a squared now equals 66.08 a will be equal to plus or minus square root of 66.08 a will be equal to 8.5 our unit here is in meters so 8.1 meters to one decimal place but the base length is twice so here again don't forget to double your a so 2a will be 2 times 8.1 meters which is 16.2 meters one decimal place or 16 meters to the nearest whole number now another example okay calculate the height of an isosceles triangle so immediately they start uh, look, uh, giving you a question in that form you should be thinking uh, maybe Pythagoras theorem okay so after you've uh, gotten all the information from the question then if you can draw a small diagram on this side and ask yourself should i use pythagoras what can i use to solve this question okay so the side length 14 kilometers and the base length 7.5 kilometers here i wasn't given the diagram i drew it myself so with the knowledge that isosceles triangle have two sides equal okay they can even draw it for you but turn it upside down or draw it sideways or draw it in a wonky form you have to be able to see okay and know what so i drew this myself so here the base length is 7.5 kilometers what the side of the isosceles triangle is 14 kilometers so if this side is 14 that side is 14 and they will definitely meet the base at right angles okay now remember 
this i'm taking only one side okay i can't use Pythagoras theorem on isosceles triangle i have to use it on the right angle triangle so i have to half 7.5 okay to get my a squared so half of 7.5 on the calculator will give you 3.75 so instead of using 7.5 I'm going to use 3.75 so here again 14 all squared will be equal to 3.75 all squared plus the height, this height, the one that I'm supposed to find. So my height now becomes 14 all squared minus 3.75 all squared. So my h squared now, which is the height, okay, will be 14 squared will be 198 minus um 3.75 all squared will be 14.06 now when i subtract my height okay my perpendicular height not the slanted height the slanted height here becomes your hypotenuse and that is your c h squared will become 181.94 h now will be plus or minus square root of 181.94 again it is a length okay so my answer which is the positive side 13.5 kilometers one decimal place so this height here is 13.5 kilometers okay the unit i've been given is in kilometers so remember to put your units and then one decimal place that is what i have uh, done if i put the answer in the nearest whole number it will be 14 okay i haven't been asked so I'll just put it to one decimal place. Now, our fourth side again. I'll another example. Calculate the side of an isosceles triangle given the base length, okay, of 8.4 kilometers and height of 7.3 kilometers. So the unit here now is 8.4 kilometers isosceles triangle have two side equal the slanted height here okay is the same as the hypotenuse okay this height here meets the base at 90 degrees otherwise it will not be an isosceles triangle okay now to use pythagoras theorem here again i need to have um 8.4 and if i have 8.4 i'm going to get 4.2 kilometers okay but i need to find the hypotenuse or the c so i can now use hypo uh, pythagoras theorem so Pythagoras theorem c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay. Our c squared here, we do not know. We are finding c anyway. But we know a, which is 4.2, half of 8.4. So 4.2 all squared. And we know the height. 7.3 all squared again all our diagrams today is not to scale i've measured um, this 90 degrees so that i can have it equal but 
I haven't put the length to scale. Okay. So C squared will be equal to 17.64 plus 53.29. Okay. I spoke to you about estimation. So assuming the calculator 14, 4 squared is 16. So this value is about right. 7 squared is 49. So this value is about right. Okay. So assuming the calculator gave me like 170 point or 76.4 i will have to look at it because i know that four squared is 16. okay we've done a video on estimation i'll encourage you to go and have a look okay so c squared now will be 17.64 plus 53.29 So again, C squared, okay, becomes 70.93. C equals plus or minus 70.93, okay. Again, the unit they gave us is in kilometers. So our answer should be in kilometers. And I'm going to choose the positive of the answer because I'm dealing with length, okay? Which is one side of the isosceles triangle which I've been asked to find. So here, um, my answer now becomes uh, 8.4 kilometers to one decimal place. If they ask me to leave it to the nearest whole number, then it will be 8 um, kilometers. If they say one significant figure, it will be 8 kilometers. If they say two significant figures, then it will be 8.4 kilometers. We've done videos on this. Please go back and watch. These are things, simple things you can do to get the full marks. You don't have to lose a lot of marks. I would rather want you to uh, concentrate to the first 60, 70 uh, part of the question right. And then go over the work okay and get maybe b or a top c or a b plus rather than rushing through everything because you have enough time you don't have to solve all the questions especially if you are doing foundations so far i've shown you topics and things you can do that has little mathematical knowledge and it can land you a safe C or a B. Okay, so you don't have to answer all the questions. You just have to be a bit savvy and just go through the question. Take your time. And if you genuinely can't answer a question, then you can't. But there are questions in your question paper that you can answer that with little mathematical knowledge which can give you a C and an above okay and that's where i'm why i'm here to show you that and to go through some of this with you if i start uh, doing more questions with you like guest questions and not by topic by topic you will realize that oh i could have done this or i can do this or i can do that 
it's just a matter of concentrating, ignoring the distraction, and just getting on with work. Okay? Thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I'll see you in the next.